I've been messing with Silly Tavern quite a lot lately, and one of my favorite things to do is create new characters in my custom world. You could say I'm even addicted to it. I've got over a dozen characters made and I'm making more all the time. So much so that I've created a character that helps me create new characters. I'm going to go over the very minimal setup to get to this point, create a new character for you, and hopefully, in the process you'll become inspired to create new stuff for yourself. So let's get into it. First of all, I'm assuming you already know the basics of Silly Tavern. At the very least, I'm assuming you have the ability to generate text and perhaps interact with some of the default characters. Now my source for text generation is Ubabuga Text Generation Web UI. With the model Chronomade Storytelling 13B. Now the model itself is not overly important, but I've chosen a role-playing model here that I've been using lately, and that I like quite a bit. I can run it on about 12 gigabytes of VRAM, and the text generation output is fairly fast. Use whatever model you like, Chronomade Storytelling is what I will be using for the duration of this video. Now with all of the prerequisites out of the way, let's start with the world info. In Silly Tavern, a world is merely context that's fed into the language model at the beginning of the roleplay, and this could range from having a lot of exotic details to just simply setting the tone for the beginning of the conversation. And in my case, there's really not much going on here, and simply telling it that it is an adventure roleplay that is oriented around monster girls. This can go in a lot of different directions. Sometimes keeping it simple and vague is for the best. That just makes it fun. You don't have to use any world info if you don't want to, but this will give our character creator some theme to work with. I'm not going to dwell on all of the particulars of this world info. Feel free to pause the video if you want to see any of the exact settings I use. But there are no hard rules for how to do this. Uh, these language models are very flexible, so don't you have something in there? The language model will work with it. So with our Sapphire Veil world info enabled, let's go on over to the character bot and start making a character. As you can see, this is very easy to make this character. The description is very brief. Character is a digital assistant designed to help with creating new roleplay character. Character can help with brainstorming character names, personalities, and appearances. So with this character description and the Sapphire Veil world info as context, that's all we need to get started. So let's go over here, start a new chat. And we'll see where this takes us. I want to make a new Monster Girl character for the Sapphire Veil scenario. Start by giving me a list of different types of Monster Girls to choose from. And would you look at that? That's one thing I like about this model, it certainly knows it's Monster Girls. Now let's say I don't really like this response. This is one of the features of Silly Tavern that I really love for brainstorming. I'll just click the swipe button and have it regenerate the response. And let's do it one more time just to see what happens. Oh, that's a big list. All right, I've done some of these before. I've done Werewolf, Mermaid, Lamia, Dragon. Let's try something I've never tried before. Let's go with a troll. Let's go with a troll. Give me a list of troll names. All right, I don't really like any of those, so I'm going to re-roll that response a few more times. Let's go for somewhere around a hundred names and, um, find one that looks good. All right, we've got some Nordic-sounding names, maybe some tribal-sounding names. I'm kind of picturing in my head a kind of World of Warcraft kind of troll. So let's go with something that sounds vaguely tribal, like Zolga. 
Now, briefly describe Zoga's personality. All right, all right. Character bot seems to also be going for the tribal motif. Then I generate a few more responses. Oh, that second one is interesting. I simply put in a few words like NSFW and uncensored in the world info. And now it's talking about breeding season. Let's go with uh, one more, and uh, maybe we can mix and match some of these, as we see fit. Maybe I'll just take that last line from the second one, and uh, apply it to the last description here. Alright, we're almost done. Uh, let's see what she looks like, shall we? Briefly describe Zolga's appearance. Alright, she's very tall, muscular, green hair, blue-gray skin, leather armor. Uh, okay, well, let's try another one. Dark green fur, I don't know about that. Try one more. Oh, I don't know. I'm not really digging this one either. Let's just go back to the first one and uh, work with that. All right, I want her to be maybe seven foot tall, and instead of green hair, let's give it red hair. Bright red hair. And the rest looks kind of good. I think we'll go with it. Now for the easy part. We'll make the character. All we have to do is open the character tab, create a new character, copy the descriptions, and paste them right here. Just a uh, syntax note, I'm surrounding the descriptions with square braces. You don't have to do this, I just have a habit of doing this with all the characters. I don't know if it really makes a difference or not. And I'm also substituting her name for the um, little syntax in curly braces. Um, I don't like the name Zolga. I can just change it in the name field, and it will get applied everywhere else. And that does it. The character is ready to go. We can start interacting with her immediately, but I'm going to do one more thing, and that's give her an appearance. So let's use Stable Diffusion to make this character come to life. Now, first of all, I am using a fork of Automatic 11.11 web UI called Forge UI. It has some memory optimizations for Stable Diffusion XL models. And as of recording this, there are some optimizations in the works for Automatic 11.11 that may allow me to readopt that web UI in the future. But for now, we are sticking with Forge. And for the model, I am using Anime Confetti Tune XL, the latest one, which came out about three weeks ago as of time of recording, seems to be pretty good. All right, I've never made a troll before, but let's see what we can do. First of all, this thing's going on YouTube, so let's make sure nothing naughty happens. And let's come up with our basic troll prompt. Be some tusks, some blue-gray skin, like the description, red hair, yellow eyes, that sort of thing. Let's give this a spin before we add any styles, just to see how well the model knows what a troll even is. No, that's better than I thought. I forgot to add scars in there, the description did say something about that. Okay, now let's add in some style. You know, I have a world of Warcraft, Laura. I might be able to add that in at low strength just to, um, reinforce the concept of the troll. And let's browse around for one more style. Maybe let's go with, um, Rake here. And let's reduce the strength of both of these. We don't really want this, either of them being too strong. And let's see what we've got. Tas Dingo, that's what I'm talking about. I think we've got a one and done here. I usually spend a lot more time trying to figure out the prompt. Let's run that through high res fix and uh, refine it a little bit within painting. I think that's going to look quite nice when we're done. 
I'm going to do a couple rounds of in-painting here, just to add more details to the body, and maybe fix up a couple minor flaws. I'll go ahead and show you the settings I'm using here. Nothing fancy, in-paint only masked. 1536 by 1536 resolution, and a denoising strength of 0.57. If you're interested in learning more about in-painting, I do have an in-painting basics guide, as well as a 20-minute walkthrough of basically what I'm doing right here. But basically the idea here is to just make it look better by going over it one section at a time. And then at the end I can make a variety of different facial expressions, by increasing the in-painting noise to about 0.75. All of these different faces will be shown as part of the character expression feature in Silly Tavern, which I will show you right now. Switch on over to Silly Tavern, let's go to our character, and we can see that our character has already shown up. More on that in a moment, but let me add the profile picture real quick. Now let's go over here to the extensions and look at the character expressions portion. If I drop this down, you will see all of these different images that correspond to different emotions. Now, what Silly Talon does here is that while the text is generating, it evaluates what the emotion is of the text and then picks the closest emotion that it has out of its list and picks the corresponding image for every different emotion. Just name it after the emotion that you see here and put it in the Characters folder in Silly Tavern under your character's name. As you can see here on my folder, no, I did not make a new face for every single one of these emotions. Some of them are just copies or sin links to other existing emotions. So don't worry if you don't feel like making all of these 20, 30 different emotions, just five or six will do. And with that, we are ready to give it a test drive. There are other things you can do. You can integrate text-to-speech to make the character talk. You can flesh out the character dialogue a little bit more. But what I think I'll do as I close out this video is make this character talk to other characters in a group chat just to see how it performs. I find it fun sometimes to just sit back and let the AI talk to itself for a bit. But aside from letting this thing ramble on for a bit, that's all I have for today. If you're still here after all my rambling, I thank you for watching this long. Let me know if you'd like to see any other tutorials or check out some of the ones I have already. But as always, Thank you very much, and have a nice day. We be German, Tazdingo man. <laughs> <laughs>